Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a rebroadcast of the live stream that I did with Jake Goslin from Churchfront. The beginning portion of that live stream didn't get put online, and so this broadcast will include that. Super excited to have Jake on the channel to be able to talk shop about all things church tech. If you know anything about Churchfront, you know that for years they have served the church production community well. Like what started as basically a YouTube channel with Jake seven years ago has now grown into this animal that has almost 700 videos on their channel that still produces weekly content into a full integration company, but still offering tons of educational content through their course catalog. And then even things like their annual worship ministry conference now, the Churchfront Conference. So Churchfront has a lot going on and I was super thankful to have Jake join me on the channel. So let's jump right into my conversation with Jake Goslin. Well, I'm excited to see all the stuff that Churchfront is doing, how you guys have expanded and like how you haven't, you haven't, abandoned what got you there like your youtube stuff is still going strong and better than ever i feel like you know every week i'm like what's you know what's gonna come from church Thanks, man. because like i need inspiration for my channel to you know that's what well that's what we say <laughs> that's what i say every week is what's coming from church front i don't know what we're gonna make up you know well it's fun because by doing so much client work with churches we have this endless supply of video ideas from real solutions that we're implementing with these different churches. Um, and that makes for a fun content calendar because yeah, we're just, we, we got so much stuff like it, it, for the first, even though we're busier than ever with integration, I actually feel like we're getting way ahead more than ever on our content calendar because all of these integration projects we do, we have so many videos, um, coming out of them. Yeah. What's your uh, streaming setup today? I'm sure people are curious. Uh, right now I borrowed Matt's setup in his desk space. So this is kind of our newer office setup here. There's literally like nothing in this office right now, except for his desk. And I have a $40 folding table that I got from target for now to use in a folding chair. Um, but I've got the shore MV seven. Is that what this one is? A USB mic. It's a little like SM seven B, but cheaper version of it. And then, uh, an a 6400 with a i think a 24 to 70 lens on it and going into a10 mini pro uh, and that's it yeah awesome. just going into the computer very cool well dude thanks for hopping on it's gonna be great we're gonna review some live streams we're gonna talk church tech and so i just want anybody that's on the stream today go ahead and drop those questions in the chat if you have a tech question for Jake, uh, drop that in the chat. We'll try to get to those. We do have our first super chat of the day coming from Nathan Stearns. So I want to say wow. thank you to Nathan. Wow. And so why don't we just go ahead and jump into the live stream reviews. And it just so happens that Nathan, I believe, is on the docket to get his live stream reviewed. So we can go ahead and skip ahead to his live stream, if that's cool with you. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so let me hop over here and pull up Nathan's information here. I believe Nathan is from the Springs, and we can kind of talk about their setup here for a second. Uh, the Springs, right? Let's see. Yep. So the Springs, as I kind of play this, we'll we'll turn the volume down and just tell you their setup here. Um, they are rocking. An ME1 Studio 4K, um, some FX30s, so good cameras, um, some 70 to 200s, an FX3, Sony A A3s. So they got good cams. Their biggest pain point is sound, though. So like, how do they deal with vocals? Um, sometimes it's like vocals are too tucked in the back. Sometimes it's too far out front. So you know, I don't know the best way to maybe achieve some balance there. Uh, with their audio setup, they're doing it through a SQ6, and it's all being mixed on the front of house and then stereo out with an aux mix. And he does, says he does have a Waves card that he runs effects on their vocals um, and some mastering plugins. So he solos out things to use headphones, but that's all like in the room. So, you know, how can you kind of do a better mix when you're doing it like that? So let's listen and watch a little bit here. Uh, Nathan's uh, The Springs Online. So here we go.
instrumental. All right. Anything jump out at you from, you know, visuals, audio uh, that you want to chime in on? Sorry. I was, I was, I had muted, uh, I muted this so I could hear, I, I listened to the actual video in the stream. So it sounds, sounds significantly better going straight from YouTube. So you said, what was the, and I had you muted. So what was your question? What, what jumps out? I think I yeah. got the tail end of that. Yeah. Basically anything uh, jump out, audio, visual. Uh, it's really good. I, I'm like, I'm like, I'd be super pretty. I'd be very, uh, pleased, uh, if this was, you know, the, the tier of quality at, at my church on a, on a regular basis here. So, I mean, if we're going to do any feedback stuff, it's going to be very, uh, nitpicky type of stuff on this. So, but the lighting, first of all, lighting looks great in the room. So subjects are lit, lit well, you got the nice color in the backlight. Um, so man, yeah, I think the video looks fantastic. Um, and I'm trying to think here. Yeah, the movement you guys got on some of these cameras too. I don't know if you just got some like sliders going on um, or motorized sliders, it looks like. Framing looks really good. Yeah. They really have, you really have all the fundamentals like spot on there. Um, and there's like some of these things like video wise, I don't think I can make any recommendations just seeing the, you know, com knowing it's FX 30s, which yeah, it's a solid <laughs> camera, but it's still like a, that's still like a, budget camera in the greater scheme of cameras right yeah. um so this is just a good example of like this this quality of this stream is probably outpacing other live streams with much more expensive qu equipment absolutely especially especially knowing that then okay let's talk about audio again i was streaming from the actual youtube video to airpods i was very happy with the the balance of everything maybe the only thing i could think of is uh maybe on the drums i kind of fast forwarded to like the bigger choruses and maybe the tone of the drums i feel like i i wasn't getting as much like uh on the kick drum maybe not as much slap as i want to hear of it like kind of pierce punching through a little bit on the mix but other than that i mean again i'd, I'd have to listen a little bit longer sure now speaking of drums i noticed they're using the f note drums you guys use those a lot and recommend those a lot do you have any techniques for how you're routing those drums to the house if they have enough channels are you using a left right mix out of the brain are you doing us processing them differently yeah I mean, we do have them all individually broken out and i imagine um uh nathan right Is yeah. this nathan stream mm -hmm. nathan does i imagine they would do that i mean they, this sq6 should have plenty of channel counts for them to do that so I think it might just come down to like what's the sample selection maybe of the sounds that they're using. Um, and then, yeah, the other thing too, it would be interesting to pull up, we could, we could pull up a stream of uh, Rock Harbor to hear what, what Ace has done to the mix there with the F notes. But Ace, Asa, our mix engineer, he, he's he's volunteer, but the kid is, he's a nerd and he will tweak them like crazy to sound like really, really good. So maybe nice. i gotta have him actually no he did we did do a video on the lv1 of what plug-in chain he's using specifically for uh the the drum set and all of our channels so i probably could just look that up nice uh for me the only i mean i love all the motion that you guys are are using the framing the white balance everything matches really good um i think these lower thirds I don't know if you're trying to use a downstream like a luma key and then you're using graphics as from pro presenter but it's you know, sometimes it's getting lost there um, with mm. the, you know, the the transparency of that. And so you might, that to me is kind of almost more distracting than it's worth. I would probably just go a solid uh, type background on that. It's fine on some of the shots, but when it has a, a white, you know, skirt or something like that, it's just a little odd. Um, I love the, the sliders going back and forth, framing. It looks really good. I thought the audio was on point for sure. What about the, that question of like balancing vocals, especially if you have a team? Are, are you using any favorite Waves plugins to achieve like a better compression or, or of a group or to kind of ride? Are you using audio auto riders or anything like that? I I personally don't. Um, yeah. I would rather just my, my rule of thumb with vocals is like I want to hear the lead vocalist and then anybody who's not lead, I'm pulling them back pretty low i mean there might be some styles of songs that you want to have really heavy harmonies and such or whatever or that more like gang vocals effect but for most of these worship songs it's like nah just like you really just hear the lead the lead vocalist kind of shining above all the other vocalists and then the other ones are just like subtle you almost kind of consciously have to listen for them to hear them that's 
that's my personal preference for balancing vocals and just manually just manly manually riding faders accordingly gotcha gotcha all right um jake i want to uh I want to have you talk for just a minute about maybe some of your favorite technology that you've put into some churches recently that has been budget friendly, that uh, churches need to be keeping their eye on. Like, is there a favorite mixer or a favorite video camera system uh, that has really you found success in that um, churches like mine, like a church of 500, um, that you're you're seeing a lot of kind of like influx of like mm, we should be keeping our eye on this one i i've been impressed with how i think P, if there's an award for manufacturers that are making better products while keeping things budget friendly i think ptz optics has done a good job over the past couple of years um so i've been impressed with that we've been using their ptz cameras at rock harbor for the past couple months and i do think that's a great camera solution for churches that aren't, you know, you don't have, you know, over $3,000 to spend for a camera. Um, but with the caveat, you got to make sure you have some sufficient lighting because they, you know, they definitely aren't going to look good without sufficient lighting. And really nobody should buy any fancy cameras if you don't have good, good lighting for your stage and such. Like that's where you need to be prioritizing your dollars first. So I've been impressed with that a lot. Uh, the other thing I've been geeking out about, I don't know if I'd consider it budget friendly or not. I Actually, I think it is because you know, networking infrastructure costs just about the same no matter which route you go with a lot of these different options out there. But we were using Netgear for a lot of network setups. Now we're using Ubiquity. Um, and I just think it's a way more innovative kind of ecosystem of um, managing network uh, infrastructure. That was something that, you know, I've always, like a lot of us who've been, who've been worship leaders, we've always, kn always known enough about IT technology to like kind of be dangerous and you know get something functioning on a network but the past year be doing full bigger projects I've had to learn a lot more about um, gateway switch access point management and it's actually very simple a lot more I want to make more content about this very soon to show people and be like hey you can you can set this up yourself you could probably prevent yourself from hours and hours of network headaches um, and I'll just recommend using the the unify or ecosystem i think unifies the software maybe ubiquity is the manufacturer it's all yep. it's all the same thing so like i would recommend that um trying to so think of i have a question though, about thing. oh you know the, the other thing that i would say is budget friendly that i want to try out soon i haven't tried it yet is the the dante uh sorry the the yamaha dm3 d it's like a two thousand dollar 22 channel mixing console with dante built into it so i'm like that that seems kind of cool. So I think I'm going to get one of those for our office here to try out um, because I think that's pretty insane value. It's not going to have the high channel count of a Behringer comp wing compact or something like that. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really curious to try it out. Gotcha. So I do have a question on the Unify Ubiquity stuff. We use Unify for a lot of stuff here, but uh, do you have any trouble managing Dante and things like that through the Unify switches? No, and they've only gotten better having you got to make sure the switches you do use have layer three capability. So I think it's going to be the um, like the, the UDM the pro. pro. Yeah, I think it's going to be the pro. We're usually using like I just ordered. I have a couple here. I just got are the the Poe Pro Pro switches because um, I do think if you're doing a lot of virtual lands and stuff like that it's going to get complicated. You got to have, you got to have more of the pro level stuff. Have you guys have issues with Dante over ubiquity? Uh, I've never used Dante. Oh, okay. You never <laughs> used Dante, bro. Are you going to get it? Are you going to get it in your new system? I mean, we're, yeah, probably. I mean, it's in there. What are you guys, what are you getting? Like what's, what's your new mixing, co mixing ecosystem? So we're going to be wing front of house with wing compact and broadcast audio. Okay. That's so, nice. I mean, those could connect with AES 50, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, so, no, I'm, I think like, I'm like, man, cause the, are you sure you want to go with the wing? I just don't have any money, dude. Even for, you're doing a whole renovation of the church building. 
Yeah. They're like, and they're just like, they're like, AVL's getting fifty grand <laughs> or something like that. Um, no, I mean AVL's getting more than that, but yeah, everything gets cut, you know, and so yeah, uh, yeah. I yeah. get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm having to pick and choose where I can spend more money. Um, yeah, so that maybe was, that was a maybe we had to make. Maybe we we could have an offline conversation about Uncle Church Front and how he might be able to help. <laughs> okay, I literally have the new Black Wing sitting in a box in in my storage room right now. Oh, there's so. plenty of people who p- plenty of people who would buy that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so. So, uh, guys, sorry the the stream went offline for a second, uh, but it's back. Oh on. no! I I've been recording this whole time, so we'll, oh okay, we'll post it later. Uh, yep. People were like, "Is is this starting at eleven? What's happening?" I'm like, "Oh, sorry, guys, but this is what happens Whoops. whenever I'm a one man band." People. Anyways, yep. we're yep. rolling though. We got this. We're good. Uh, let's see. All right, I think it would be fun if we play a little game together. And so I like to play a little game called, if I can get it pulled up here. And we're going to see, I made, made this one a little harder for you, Jake, because you are Jake from Church Front. So uh, mm-hmm. we're going to see if you can do your best at a little game I call Guess the Tech. Oh, gosh. All right. So in Guess the Tech, we are going to have, I don't know, six, seven, eight different products that you are familiar with these won't be things you've never had any experience with in the church tech world and we'll start with a silhouette and we'll see if you can guess what it is from the silhouette we'll let the chat chime in to see if they can you know guess it if we get it wrong if you get it wrong i obviously know what it is so this one you don't technically have your hands on yet that i know of but let's see if you can guess what it is from the silhouette that's a new Mac Mini M4. The new Mac Mini. What are your thoughts on the new Mac Mini? It's impressive. Now I just want, um, we we buy a lot of Sonnet uh, rack mount uh, chassis for these. So I just want them to make one as soon as possible so we could start using them. So it's great. I like it. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's so tiny. And uh, does the power button on the bottom bother you? I didn't even see that. That's a thing. The power button is underneath it. Why? So they just, you just want, they want you to have it pretty much just on all the time on standby. I guess, I guess so. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. We usually keep most, most of our systems. We have the computers are always on so you can like remote into them and troubleshoot stuff when you need to. So yeah, and yeah, you can I, just re, you could just restart it, you know, do a restart once in a while. With as small as these are, uh, well, I'll ask you that later. I don't want to give away anything. Okay, how about this next one? And uh, let's give about 10 seconds to the, the chat. Banjo to... wig. Oh, he got it. I'm he not going to. That's so obvious. <laughs> so obvious. It is okay, like. I'll the... give. I'll pause next time. <laughs> there is. It is a weird form factor for sure. Here's my gripe with the new wing. Uh, the, the release that I was disappointed with. Like, we, we bought one. But why could the new wing they refreshed it made it black they came out with the compact the compact and the the rack have the onboard io and the this one though still only has like eight inputs on the actual wing oh interesting because they're like because they're like well the wing is just supposed to be a front of house and i mean i i Practically, I agree with them. I, I'm not going to put a bunch of stuff in front of house. I'm I'm adamantly against putting things in front of house, but yeah, okay. I get it. Yeah, I mean, we just, but by the time we, you know, like Pro Presenter for us, we run tracks out of it. And so that's three right there. And if you have, I don't know, if you, if you do have to run your- Not own, if you have Dante. I guess that's true. I guess if you're running things through Dante, that's mm-hmm. true. Uh, but- yeah, I don't know. It just still seems like, why couldn't they have put more if they did that? It just seems like they painted it black, but it's still fine. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, all right. How about this next one? Uh, we'll see if you can guess this. I'll thing. give people. To, I know what that is immediately. As I, I'll, I'll give people time to guess. Let's. Well, you know I what? stare. You don't know. This is a good game for me because I stare at product photos like twenty four seven all day long. Like we were. 
I'm buying this stuff all the time. Jake says get a Stage Connect 8x8 instead. So I don't know what that is. Uh, some kind of like, I guess, you know, digital stage box. We've been using those little um, just Ethernet analog to get four uh, between little things, just four XLRs, just if we only need four. Because that's one of my gripes with like an X32 in our small venue is like Digital Snake, you have to at least assign eight, right? Like you can't, it's banks of eight. Yeah. So. Well, but I thought you have the user the user oh, patching available. You're right. You could user patch it. So maybe you could do that. All right. I don't know that anyone's going to get this. Let's see. I. No. Yeah. Did anybody what get it? Think? Oh, I'm fairly positive those are LED cabinets. Do you know what kind? Oh, gosh. I mean, they're made in China. That's what I know. Uh, you have a vested interest in this. Cabinet. Oh, they're out. They're altitude LED cabinets. That's why they look so familiar. Because <laughs> is... they are made. They are made in China. The cloud. <laughs> oh, I didn't know I had to be that specific about it. I mean, bonus points. I didn't, I, I didn't know you were going to go onto our actual website and do that. So that's very yeah. specifically the cloud panel, which is that's a meter by a half a meter. And they're great cabinets because they're super lightweight and compact. I just installed some at a church the day before yesterday. Um, yeah, they're, they're great cabinets. Nice. What pixel pitch do they come in? We most typically we're doing 2.6, but you can do, you can do smaller, you can do larger, uh, but most common for like 90 plus percent of the applications we're doing 2.6. Nice. Nice. All right. How about this guy? Can I guess, or are you going to try to get someone in the chat? I think you can try. I Let's think, see. I mean, that's some sort of moving light fixture. Um, it, it doesn't look like any that, that I'm. Or no, it's a PTZ camera. I think it's a PTZ camera. All right. Oh, I changed my mind. It, it is a PTZ camera. Is and it? you have recently reviewed this PTZ. Well, I say recently. Yeah, so is it the PTZ Optics Move SE? It is the Move. Or I think 4K. 4K. You got okay. it. Yes. They look like identical. Yeah. Uh, what kind of, what's P, what PTZ have you been putting in mostly in churches? Uh, usually, what did we just do? We did... Oh, no, but the Move SE and the Move 4K just kind of depends on budget. You can get, budget. you know, yeah. the Move 4K, I definitely, I think, I think the extra money is worth it for it. Like it, it does look sharper and crisper and, What's, um, what do you think the like space between like a CRN 300 and a PTC optics Move 4K is? Yeah. Then I'm like, I'm like, man, you're pretty close time wise or sorry, money wise the bump up from a Move 4K to a crn 300 is not very much right they might be like identically priced uh the i guess the thing i think through there is like if you're gonna go the canon route uh they're i do think their joystick controller is is better and if the, at least the the precision of it is way more accurate um compared to the ptz optics but the controller is also i want to say twice as much as the the ptz optics optics controller so yeah, you're kind of on the edge there. Like, it might not be a bad idea if you're like, you know what? We want to start with, like, a nicer Canon system, and then maybe we'll add on a CRN 500 someday, then just go the Canon route. Yeah. But uh, if you're really just something budget, good value, PTZ Optics is great. Nice, nice. All right. That is a RFNU, yep, paddle antenna. Yeah, I mean, you see them everywhere, right? So, yep. although you're going to be seeing less of them. We always put in the architectural antennas um, because they work just as well for most of the applications we're in. And then they're just, they kind of, they look better. You don't have this weird looking fin sticking up. It's just kind of mounted on the wall, flush. And it looks great. Yeah, we had to add ours into our other venue, our smaller venue. And I was looking into the installation of these because I had ours aren't like way spread apart. Yeah. And I didn't realize they only have to be one wavelength apart. And they say it's anywhere between four inches to... 16 inches it's like it can be they can be really close together oh uh, yeah yeah i didn't they're like eh, as long as it's like you know one i guess wavelength apart it's fine so oh yeah that i didn't makes know sense. that all right how about this guy um that's a tough one it's got that weird handle and i you i i counter this 
normally or regularly you think uh i think that y'all y'all put quite a few of these things in um yeah they're from australia oh is it it's not a hazer is it no it's not a hazer it's not a no as from a australia what do we get from us oh it's a black magic <laughs> studio camera that's what it is <laughs> yeah you got it yep yeah, weird, weird little guys. I, for, I forget. I forget they're based in Australia. All right, this one shouldn't be too hard for you. I, it's so boxy that I had to kind of give you a little hint. Hopefully, I don't know if you can. Oh yeah, the KBMs. <laughs> I think I would have. I think I would have recognized it. <laughs> just, even just even a rectangle. Without, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just the yep, the trapezoid or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if these are the exact ones you guys are using, but you guys talk about these things all the time. It, sell me on why I need to put KVMs in. Because all computers deserve a home. Uh, I'm fighting for computer rights. Computers <laughs> need a proper, safe home and an equipment rack somewhere. And I'm fighting for front of house workstation rights so that where your front of house needs to be clean. It does not need computers and cra crazy dongles everywhere and stuff like that. All it needs is a keyboard, mouse and keyboard, or mouse, keyboard and monitor and then this little guy, this little box, and then it, you'll send a data connection to the KVM in the rack with the computer, and it's very, very clean. So that's that's my case for it, just because in our ideal setup now, we're often putting two 44U equipment racks uh, in, a, in a rack room or something like that, or somewhere convenient, where you could service and reconfigure pretty much your whole system in like those two racks, and it just makes it so much simpler when you're trying to, when you're like, oh man, I want to send another video output from my computer to my video switcher. Then you're not going from your your uh, video, your computer in in the tech booth, and then running another video cable all the way to your switcher, maybe in the rack room, or then or like if you're trying to make a new video run from your switcher, like people put switchers in in tech booths, and it's like all my videos have to go back into the tech booth and our video cables have to go in the tech booth and if i want to add something it just it just creates a mess these things so the paradigm is you separate computer from workstation and then you can have some flexibility where it's like oh i want to move my uh pro presenter workstation to this this chair and, and spot on my desk instead of this one it's much quicker to make that swap by just like with depending on what kind of KVM you get. But these are more budget friendly ones where it's literally just a quick cable patch. Yeah, like a couple hundred bucks maybe for these. Yeah, two about two hundred bucks a pop. Nice for the transmitter and the receiver. Nice. Uh, last one. Speaking of things that make life a lot easier. Yeah, SDI tool. Oh my gosh, yep. man! BNC extraction. This made me so happy when i bought it mm -hmm. the best mm -hmm. best eight dollars i've spent in a long time so yep. if you guys yep. haven't gotten one of these and you have an atem sdi stuff uh you know you know the the grueling struggle it is to try and twist a bnc connector in the middle of those things so yep. go get one yep. of those off amazon yeah all right friends that was guess the tech jake you are i think an all-star i think you you may have outperformed every other guest i've ever had on the live stream i again i hope so i'm like <laughs> i'm i'm literally i'm like buying so many products every single week and i have to make sure i get all the right details right so i look at these photos and specs like all the time <laughs> that's funny that's funny all right let's jump into two more live stream reviews i know we've got josiah and adam who have super chatted I will get to y'all's live stream reviews. I don't know. It looks like we've got Liam and Chris who are next up, and then I'll get to you guys after that. So uh, let's jump into Swan Bank is the church. So I will get them pulled up. Um, they have some very dry sounding audio is what their main struggle is, is what they're talking about. So as we listen to and look at Swan Bank here, um, let me see if I can get them going, push all the right buttons. Uh, they, their biggest pain point is this dry sounding audio. They use uh, Pro Tools to mix their live stream and it sounds way better, but they only have one person that knows how to use the Pro Tools uh, mixing. And so they just want help with that. 
Um, they do have Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K to do some of their, their video stuff and an ATEM uh, 2ME 4, 4K. So they've got some good tools there. But let's listen to Swan Bank here. And then guys in the chat, chime in. Let us know your thoughts too. This is all a one big community here. So here we go. So, uh, anything jumping out to you there, Jake, from Swan Bank, from audio, video, uh, that you want to chime in on? Any thoughts? He's probably still listening, so I'll give my thoughts. Uh, my thoughts are that I think you guys are off to a good start there. Um, it sounds like audio-wise, the main thing I noticed is that the audio is not in sync with the video, and so the timing of lining up your video with audio may become difficult because what I think I was hearing was that the audio was actually delayed behind the video, which means maybe you're doing too much in Pro Tools and adding a lot of latency, so, which means you would have to add delay to your video, which used to be really difficult. Now, things like OBS and ProPresenter allow you to delay your video. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. So you're just gonna have to get that audio line back up. Um, there's some overdriving, some some different things with levels, maybe just gain structure. Um, but Jake, what what jumped out at you? Um, with the audio side of things, um, again, when I when I hear it stream through the platform, like through this live stream, it's like, oh man, it sounds horrible. But I go to the YouTube channel, I'm like, oh, it's actually like it's not that, it's not that bad. Like I like you said, I think it's a really solid start to it. Um, I was looking up the details of kind of what was their stack that they're using for for the rest of the stuff. I mean, I guess we don't have details on, you know, Pro, Pro Tools is Pro Tools, but like what are the microphones, preamps, stuff like that too, and like just kind of how the sound reinforcement is done. That can obviously play a big role. Uh, looks like it's a Roland electric drums there. It sounds like they might have samples on those drums. Or do you think that's uh, what we're hearing in the drum? Like are they doing samples in Pro Tools? I wonder that. Uh, Liam says, hi, I'm the individual who mixed the stream. We had an issue with a strange chorus effect on the lead vocal. Couldn't figure out the issue. The issue with latency is I'm using Dante Virtual Sound Card. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Because Dante Virtual Sound Card should only add like, it's like four milliseconds or something. It's not... That's yeah. not... Usually if, the, if, you, if we visibly see latency issues, there's like... Uh, it, you're talking like in the hunt sometimes like 100 milliseconds plus of uh latency being added which could i think come from like plugins and stuff yeah yeah did you were you hearing the snare sounding like that machine gun a lot of people were commenting on just like way too much reverb on the snare possibly mm -hmm. yeah i i agree yeah. um i think tips for people mixing in pro tools or mixing off in a different room because that we've never done that and we're going to be trying that i'm a fan of like the broadcast audio thing if you have a good mix in the room you can you don't have to do that but you know how do you make sure you're not like getting into your own world like without a reference mix and like then you all of a sudden are like you just your mix becomes garbage you know like how can mm -hmm. you ha have that target consistently where you're are you monitoring like audio levels with some type of tc electronic thing are you 
using a template? What, what, are you, what are you advising people that want to go that route nowadays? I, man, because I, I do think mixing in a box and a DAW is great if you have this, if the, the person who is running that is, I, they have to be very skilled at it. Like I think mm. there's less room for error there in knowing best practices and mixing. So it's like a lot of, a lot of times today we're, we are just recommending people use a, just a, another mix bus or a matrix on their front of house console. And then you just have a lot fewer things that can go wrong. Uh, in your really, you can just focus on that one front of house mix. But again, the with the DAW setup, it's helpful if you really do have maybe a super inadequate PA system, uh, really hard acoustics in your room, and you really just need to take those sources from the stage and have a completely independent mix and independent processing. I get it, I understand it, but it actually it just requires way more skill to even to, to even get that right and make up for it. So then you know, the integrator side of me is like, just get your room treated right and get a good PA in there. And then this is going to solve all those problems. And you can just, you can just mix from, from one, one console. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Let's listen just a little bit more and watch a little bit more and see if we see anything else that jumps out. The snare sounds way better now, so they fix the snare. Sometimes, you know, you jump to the later in the live stream, it's like, oh, they they had time yep. to fix some things. Um, the only thing I, I would also just, I would say like speak a little bit to lighting here. This is where I mm -hmm. think lighting could visually improve some things. I think the, like this shot specifically of him, I just don't, it feels like there's no key light on, yeah. or front light on the worship leader here. So that's where I'm like, man, if you had, you know, just throw up a couple, maybe a couple good wash lights up there. It would massively improve the Skin visual tones. side of the stream too. Um, yeah, that's a big thing. I mean, little nitpicky things. I prefer just having two lines of text for lower thirds. Um, so often that's going to translate to two lines of text on your screens as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like the drummer is like really dark in the dark there. Um, I like that yeah. shot of the keys. It's a lot of locked off shots currently. If you could add just one person like on a roaming camera somehow to just give some different, you know, shots to, I like the, the cutting pace, but it's all just, you know, you, you have your locked off shots and that's what you have to go between. Um, but yeah, some lighting stuff, maybe adding one other camera op with a handheld rig to give some variation. Cause so far we're seeing a lot of just the team. And I'm not seeing much of the congregation besides that one side shot. And I personally love seeing shots where it's from the back of the room, sweeping across, showing some of the congregation. You can see a little bit of some silhouettes there, but I don't really have any ideas of viewer of like the space I'm living in. I've seen no wide shots. Um, this seems more like a broadcast iMag kind of thing that it doesn't look like you really need to do. So, you know, you could probably free yourself up and be more creative since you don't have to put it up on, on screens in the room. Um, the other thing I've, I heard was just acoustic guitar it seemed like it had a lot of top end. So I would probably high cut that a little bit and, and make that a little more pleasant to the mix. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes I like to just for kicks, go to the preaching time because we focus so much on the worship time. But what I found is like a lot of times tech guys like mail it in when it comes to preach. Looks like they've got their follow cam going though. Good. We need some better key light probably just, and I think that would help the pastor. Hey, that's an easy way to sell getting new mm -hmm. key light is, Hey, you, you're going to look a lot better during preach, <laughs> you know? Yep. So, uh, I think key light is the very best investment we can make a lot of times in our spaces. What's your favorite key light you're putting in places? Uh, I, I've been using the pro church light stuff. Um, Pro Wash, Pro Wash Max, or whatever. I can't remember the model names, but they look great. Yeah. Even even it's it's almost one of those things where like I you even underestimate sometimes something as simple as a good 
key light fixture because we had some at South Fellowship Church. We had some elation front lights at at that church. Those were also like fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars just front lights, front wash lights from by elation, and they, uh, you know, kind of did. They did their job for a while, but then one of them just kind of like just went out and. That's when uh, Aaron decided, like, hey, let's just, like, upgrade these to Pro Church Lights. And the first Sunday, like, I, you know, just seeing the front, the, the way people were lit on stage, I was like, wow, just something about the the temperature, the characteristics yeah. of the lights, maybe it's the RSI or something like that. It did look different. And, like, the thing about the, the these Pro Church Lights are, like, half the price is the elations. <laughs> yeah, and it's basically the same light, right? I mean. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked... Um, can I talk about why I click on the stats for nerds things? So two things in the YouTube player that I've kind of been checking on, the stats for nerds things, there's a volume normalized thing here where it will tell you if this number right here has a plus in front of it, that means that YouTube is actually having to normalize your audio down. You're sending too hot of a signal to YouTube. But if it's anything below, like between negative eight and zero like negative one then you're pretty good is what i found anything below like negative six you're probably too quiet uh for what youtube is wanting and then the other interesting thing that's been happening that i don't know if you guys have seen in your player is it's made right here this stable volume it looks like youtube is being smart enough to know when it's live music and music related things to not for stable volume and there's not a way for us to like tell youtube to not do stable volume i don't think but that's a thing that youtube is now trying to make it where between videos it's keeping the volume you know stable kind of like tvs have that you know built in but that is gonna have to be something we keep our eye on for our live streams have you have you noticed any of that stuff no, I haven't. I I never didn't even know that tool was in that in the player like that. So I'll definitely be using that. Yeah, it's an interesting little little thing I saw somebody talk about one time. So, mm-hmm. all right, let's uh, do one little segment before we do our live stream review, our final one with Jake. Uh, I would like to do just a little overrated, underrated church tech segment with you. Get your thoughts from Sounds the good. guru. Overrated or underrated? Remote audio mixing it's a big thing that a lot of companies are starting to offer to the church world uh is this something that is underrated churches should really be looking into this or is it kind of overrated um i i would say for most people it's overrated i think there are some cases where it makes sense but the man it's it's kind of it's kind of tough. It's like it, I, cause I feel like there's so many factors to consider here. We, one, one anecdotal experience is we actually, we had a client who had been using a remote mix service, you know, for a while. And then they, um, and this was prior to us like doing a full upgrade system for them. And it's great. They have a really awesome solid system. Now it's like, it's one of those things where it's like gear, Gear could not be an excuse for not producing phenomenal results, right, for your live stream. Um, so they could, because they have a really well-balanced PA and treated room, like their broadcast matrix mix from their their SQ console will sound phenomenal online. But they kept, they wanted to keep using the um, the remote mix service that they that they have, and uh, you know, it, so we would listen to it and we're like. I feel like it would sound better if they just pulled the mix from their console and they'd also not be paying the thousand bucks a month or whatever it is. Right. So, and then I know like there's another company, uh, out there who I think they started providing that service for a church here, um, in, uh, near Florida. And I'm really impressed with the results and the consistency of it. That church does not have someone with the right ear to mix to the quality that this church wants online. Um, but they do have premium gear on site at their church, like nice. I think they have a D Live system, and just really, they have a solid system. It's just like they didn't. Some churches are just weird on how they think about capital allocation and money. It's like, well, would I rather pay a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred bucks a month for someone competent to be on site to like be a part time tech director, mix engineer? Yeah, I would. I would still kind of prefer that over a remote mix person because in a live 
environment, even though we're specifically usually talking about this for broadcast setup, I think there's much more value to be had about someone who is like boots on the ground at the at the space and able to support the worship team and the pastor uh, in person. So I I like the innovation of it. Uh, I yeah. do think it's a little bit overrated. Um, yeah, that can be. Yeah, th those are my thoughts there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that makes sense. Um, next, what about up. you? No, what did, what did, what about you? Oh man, uh, overrated, underrated for remote audio mixing. Um, I have yet to actually try it, and so I think it's overrated for the cost that I've seen so far. Um, from the success that I've been able to have with a broadcast, we don't even monitor our broadcast audio. Like literally it is unmonitored. I set it up, I listen yep. to it after rehearsal and it's done. Like, yep. and if there's one little failure of something, it's well, are you mixing, of, are you doing a separate mixer or DAW? What no, are you doing? No. So it's, it's a, it is a stereo post fader mix, yeah. but then a, pre-fader drum mix merged into a stereo matrix broadcast that goes to our atom yeah that makes sense so you could you can have so my drums more, are pre more flex more flexibility on on how your drums sound on the stream yeah versus that, in person that way if i've got somebody who doesn't like as much snare drum or whatever it's like well the drums aren't really i don't need them to tweak my drum sounds online so um yep. and that's yep. worked great for us you know but in the remodel, we're going to something we've been doing as a team is riding a lot more and having that recording space is going to be cool. And so mm -hmm. it's like, why not go ahead and have that set up for broadcast audio if we want to go ahead and do that? And then we can always fail over to broadcast or the, the post fader thing if we want to. So, yep. Yep. But for now, it's like I, I probably wouldn't pay for it at this point. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and for small churches, it's like, I just don't know that that's where I would spend the money. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Again, these are like bigger questions about how you just allocate finances and when that's, when is that appropriate for your small church? I think it's a, it's a nice luxury for churches that are well resourced, but for some reason, sometimes an area that a church is in might not be well resourced in skill to be a mix engineer. That's right? true. That's, that's true. Uh, it's just so many factors that, that come into play there. Well, speaking of resourcing, how about this one? I've seen this come up. Uh, Bitcoin tithing options is that underrated or overrated? I, th I think it's for the most part. Uh, I mean, I think okay, Bitcoin in general massively underrated, right? Like, <laughs> massively underrated and undervalued. Uh, in the church world, I would say, actually, I think it's under Bitcoin tithing is is also underrated. I'll say that confidently because the benefit from the donor is that if you buy bitcoin or bought bitcoin at let's say ten thousand dollars and now it's like you know almost eighty thousand dollars you can when you when you make your donation you're making a donation at that like eighty thousand dollar per bitcoin amount so it is a large tax write-off and then you're not paying nobody's paying any capital gains to the government on that liquidation well, when you make the donation to the church, the church can sell it for dollars and they're not paying capital gains on that donation, where if you just sold it for dollars as a normal individual, you would have to pay the capital gains. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't know how the go between services, you know, how, what benefit, I'm sure they're getting something out of it that. Yeah. Well, so it's always, uh, so it's Bitcoin custody is important to think about like who, if a church is going to start taking Bitcoin, okay, who's actually holding on the, to the keys to that Bitcoin. So that's where there is opportunity for services to come out to, you know, do that in a way that's financially responsible. Um, I recommend a service called Unchained. Uh, if, if a church is looking to hold Bitcoin as a church entity, like I would do something like that because they, they use the best methods, technology. You're actually not even have to trust the company because they actually show you how to self custody it with multiple keys and such. So, um, yeah, that's a whole rabbit hole, but yeah. I think, I think it's under, I think it's underrated and people are going to kind of realize that here pretty, pretty soon over the next few years. All right. All right. Guys in the chat, chime in with your uh, overrated underrated on these things as well. Cause, uh, yeah, 
Um, how about this one? What do you think is, I want your either most un- underrated or most overrated soundboard. Uh, a mixer that is either really overrated or really underrated in your opinion. I think the Behringer wing is both of those things. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you sound like Lee Fields. I know. I know. It's funny. I don't know if it's like I'm getting old or what, like, but I think, I feel like I just like, no, part of it is actually, uh, I'll be, I'll be. You muted oh. yourself. Yeah. You want, you want you me go. to be, I'll be, I'll be transparent with you guys. The, the thing about Behringer, as I'm learning more about, uh, the integration world and being a dealer of products, Behringer is like, Hey, the only people who can carry our products are going to be Sweetwater and Amazon, right? So they just remove a massive amount of incentive for other integrators, AV installers, you know, people like Churchfront to want to promote and sell those products because like we 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 can't get any margin on those products and the margin is important. So like when stuff goes wrong, like, you know, obviously we make money on it so we can function as a business to service a client. Oh, got the thumbs up going here too. The uh, And then also just like having margin where it's like, oh, if let's say a client buys a wing from us and something malfunctions and we just want to have the policy on our end to be able to do a hot swap for them be like, Hey, here's a new wing, take it. We'll get this other one, you know, situated and figured out. We could do that from a wing that we, you know, we buy from a Sweetwater or Amazon, but there's just financially it doesn't make sense. So it, that's where I, I think the wing, I'm becoming less of a fan of it just because again, full full transparency like i don't have the financial incentives to really care for it that much i do think it does pack i will acknowledge like behringer still packs a ton of value in their gear especially if you are doing a diy setup and you don't need someone to help service your your equipment for you or your system for you or anything like that then then by all means go go with behringer and do it but don't like I tell clients, it's like we can go Behringer, but don't call us up if something goes wrong with this console. Like yeah. cause we're not, we we can't support it. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, I mean, even our integrators uh, who are amazing. Uh, recently, you know, Sweetwater had a great deal on uh, some on the wing and a stage box, and so whenever the, they were coming out with the new stuff, and they were like, "Hey, if you want to grab it, go for yep. it." You know, I mean, the, you can probably get a better deal doing that than you can with us having to be the go-between guy. To- so that's to- what we did. Totally, yeah, yeah. So, uh, how about, um, live vocal tuning? What's your hot take? Underrated, uh, overrated? Oh, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's underrated. I think it's good. I think it's important. Works great, uh, in the right, when it's set up properly and the results are great. So, um, wait, you still yeah. waves tune? What do you like? Yeah. 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 Waves tune. Okay. Yep. Um, how about live streaming for churches under 75 people? Um, I think it's. Uh, I think it's underrated and you still do it, but just don't make it so stinking complicated. People yeah. just get like, I just don't, I don't understand. It's like, yeah, if you're under 75 people, it's the best time to have like to do a live stream. It's like easier than ever to do it for such a small application like that. So like, just keep it so, so simple. Like, don't feel like you need to look like elevation or something. If you're a church of 75 people, like that's just like, it's that's just not cle- that's just not clear thinking that's the <laughs> kind way i'm gonna put that yep yep all right last one ai for churches underrated or overrated uh i think it's still underrated because we use ai a lot especially for a lot of like our content workflows now i think churches can easily um use I use rev.com to make transcripts of videos and then I put the transcripts into chat GPT and I tell it like, Hey, make me a web article out of this. Make me YouTube chapter markers from this video. Um, it saves hours and hours of time. So churches are, you know, making content on a regular basis too. And they could benefit from those things because the reason I like to make like web articles is because it helps with SEO. Like it's going to rank better on Google and then, uh, YouTube chapter markers. I feel like make YouTube longer YouTube videos perform better. Because people yeah. can can kind of scrub to the part part of the video that they want to watch. Yeah. Hey, here was a comment that I think we can apply to all of these things we've been talking about. Josh from Budget Church live streaming says, "Underrated the soundboard you already have." We can apply that to probably almost all the tech we already yep. have. It most yep. of it is underrated. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Uh, most of us are just underinformed. 
yeah. on how to on how to use it better and more more effectively it's like man just a few hours of this is why like church fund started out the way it did with like hey we're just about getting the knowledge out there and helping you learn these things because sometimes better knowledge can get you like 80 to 90 percent of the way to the goal that you you're looking for with the same gear um but there are going to be scenarios where it's like these are 25 30 year old speakers and they're going to sound bad in this room no matter what like you're going against physics especially if you don't have like certain infrastructure in place like there is like there's a balance and it's just it, it's it's different in, in every situation where when knowledge can get you far enough or or it actually takes better better equipment yeah yeah all right let's do our final live stream with jake let's hop over and uh look at uh north liberty christian church um, they've got some Panasonic, like CX-350. I guess those are probably like uh, camcorders, uh, Panasonic UE-50, some Marshall CV-504s. Um, their biggest pain point, though, is really their audio mix. So they have an aux send that's coming from their Avantis, Avantis, I don't know how you say it. Um, and then that's mixed on an iPad using the Mix app. So... Uh, basically, like, how can they make their audio mix better? Let's listen to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll, I'm gonna mute my camera here, and I'm gonna go listen to it. When you see my camera back on, that means I can hear you. That's perfect. All right, here we go, friends. Let's listen. You guys give feedback as well. All right, this is Chris's. Church. I was your foe, still your love for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so I think your team has some great players. You, I, I mean, I'm hearing talent there on the stage. One thing you said, Chris, is that no effects could be routed through the send, so it's pretty bland, which surprises me on the Avantis. I think it'd just be a matter of bumping up your reverb in that aux send, and so I'm sure you could probably figure that out. Um, but yeah, your vocals are real dry, uh, drums are real dry, um, and yeah, we can talk about some other stuff, but Jake, was there anything that jumped out to you? Yeah, this is a case where I really do feel like they have the right foundation of like tech technology between the mixing console, what I'm seeing on stage. They even have the full drum enclosure, and this is where I would want to like just come in. And we, our team has done this before, where we just kind of help like re, let's just rebuild this this mix using the tools that you have. And like, because I there's some basic things where I'm like, are all the gain structures set properly on all these microphones? Um, and 
just just start with the basics like you know just kind of like a let's wipe this console clean and start over with a clean clean setup um and then the other thing i listened to the pastor's mic and preaching and that room sounds like it's got a crazy reverb time um mm-hmm. just for the just for the talking section of it so that's where i wonder if you're also fighting a lot of acoustical issues in your room for for the mix because that could be that could be really causing a huge huge headache um for you guys yeah i could see that as well uh i think just eq wise the acoustic guitar definitely seems a little top endy to me uh if you could sweeten that up a little bit make it a little more mid-rangey um, yeah dude i tend i tend to like use my high pass and low pass filters i kind of just kind of bring in like yeah we're like like you said my acoustic guitars are generally just in the mid-range and it's like that's especially when they're in the context of a full band like if, yep. if, it, if it it would probably be different if it was just like a solo acoustic guitar but uh, you don't need a bunch of high jangly sounds coming from your acoustic yeah josh says we always be putting those drummers in the dark and that is so true it's mm-hmm. a beautiful cage but i would love you to add some led tape to the top or something some kind of lighting in there so he's not in the cave you know it's a beautiful uh drum cage but i'd rather it not be a drum cave so um <laughs> yep was the you said the uh the worship leader is on the sh- this chat right now i don't know there? if i'm not sure if or the chris got on here or not i haven't seen let's see okay. if chris is on here now i haven't seen his chat yet so he may not. Oh yeah, there he is. Treatment is on the docket for 2025. Oh cool, awesome. Yeah. I wonder what kind of treatment they're going to go with. Do you have a recommendation? We always do uh, prime acoustic. Um, it, I would prioritize wall panels for for your first treatment. Again, it's it's hard not seeing the room. Dude, just Jake at churchfront.com. Just just email me a, a picture of your uh, your space. Uh, let, let me see all the surfaces and angles and stuff, and I'll um and rough dimensions and we can work on an actual like ballpark quote for you but it's definitely starting with wall panels those are generally the most effective um and then if it's depending on the architecture you might need cloud panels as well yeah i think just as from a live stream viewers perspective i mean i would love to see more context of the space this is a wide shot but it's kind of that bird's eye view thing and it's a static cam i mean it's a bail shot that's fine the rest of them are just kind of those locked off shots, which it's, they're not bad. Like the framing on this is fine, but you need some more key light maybe to give some more definition to faces. Um, there's lots of areas you can touch on, but I think it's just like prioritizing. What do you want your live stream to look like in two years? And then working backwards from that and spending your money wisely along the way, right? So yep, yep. I think you guys are have the pieces just like jake said like you got a lot of great tech already so reach out to jake reach out to his team and see how they see how they can help you out dude you want to you want to grill my our live stream i haven't i haven't been there but this is actually kind of funny because okay which one one of them this sunday uh ace asa's he's he's awesome dude and he's he's doing so much good work but he Okay, the 8.30, one of the streams, he, like, tweaked something, and he completely, like, rerouted the audio. So one of them's, like, silent. I'm just trying to find the right link for you. Okay, so go to, I'll just uh, Rock send Harbor. you. I'll, yeah, Rock Harbor Church, uh, Melbourne Beach, or just Melbourne. And I'll, I can also just, rep- I'll put in the email to you uh, the link of the, the one you want to go off of. But this is, this one is, an, I think our church is an interesting case study for folks here because... We do have a Waves LV1 mixing console, which so don't go to the, the far right on top, not the yeah that one right there I think. Um, so we're using Waves LV1 here. We have a very mediocre mixing console. Um, I'll let you listen to a little bit when we talk about it after. Sure. So this is a this is a Waves LV1 song for us this morning. And it's an invitation to the Holy Spirit to come in and rest on us. It's a simple song to sing, and let's just bring him in and open our hearts. What are y'all encoding through? What's that? What are you encoding through? Uh, Resi. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. my heart pound when you feel 
Sounds really good, dude. His vocal dude, clarity. Go to, yeah, it's go good. To, uh, go to the second song, uh, Build My Life, and listen to when the drums are playing all out, like what he's done with those F note. Let's see. That's Dry Bones. Or no, I thought... Yeah. Is this one? Maybe I'm on the wrong link. Open the grave, oh. I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Is the sound of dry yeah, just rattling. just move forward to where it's like he's playing like full out snare drums. There, there we yeah, go. There we go. Here it comes. Pentecostal fire. Pentecostal fire. You're stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Yeah, I like it. It's not too much of like like that like gunshot bullwhip sound but it's like enough mm -hmm. to like beef it up and it sounds yeah. like that worship drum stuff that we're all the bethel snare that everybody is kind of after the tom sounded great too this is the praise naked dead man walk again And that's going through a waves LV1 or yeah, it's all just it's one at one waves LV1 with a separate broadcast mix setup. So one th interesting thing that Asa did, and this is all credit to Asa because the kid he just like he works for NASA, but he just like all of his free time he just like likes to mix and figure stuff out. So we have an in-depth video where he actually because we have a 64 channel license on the LV1, he had we have like 32 channels for like in-house, and then he repatched a, a second uh, almost 32 channels for just the broadcast so like we we have a lot of flexibility coming off of this one console and how we're how we're processing it for the live stream nice dude that's that sounds really really good so those f notes i mean can you add your own custom samples to them yes i thought you couldn't but then uh we were talking with the f note rep at the conference and we we're like he he had a kit there and we're like why is why does it sound so good and he's like oh i have this special snare that i put in it so apparently you can i i don't know i i gotta get some more clarity on on what they did here but because i think asa it might have been a sample or asa it's learned like, how to just dial it better okay. dial it in better with the settings in the actual uh module gotcha oh it sounds really good yeah i spent about eight hours this last week maybe more dialing in our new drums because we're electronic drums in our smaller venue we have an elisa strike pro in there that uh is yeah. you know needed some love so i loaded in you can actually load a f all your samples onto that brain and run everything natively on it so you don't have to run uh... like you don't have to run trigger on a different computer or anything which is cool you can build a custom kit on there so we're running like austin davis like carrie job's drummer samples all nice. on there and so that and that helped a ton you know but it's still yeah. it's still electronic drums it's yep. not not the best like cymbals and stuff is just not the same but it's yep. better that's cool anyways oh man well thank you dude for being on here before you go i would love for you to talk about just like what is an accelerator student i hear you throw out that term uh, is that still the terminology y'all are using going forward? I know y'all have had some changes. Yeah, yeah. No, it's funny. It's actually it's funny you mention that because I was I was literally just thinking about this this week because we're um, thinking of changing it to being accelerated was kind of like our consulting program. So if someone's in our program, it's like yeah, you come to church front, you're gonna learn everything we know. We don't know every answer in the world, but you know we know maybe a little bit more to help you take that next step wherever you're trying to hit these goals with your uh, worship and tech ministry. And now that we're doing more like, um, we do a lot more work for clients through like integration processes and stuff and the training's still part of it. So I think we're at, we might just call it like, do you want to be a church front client? Just a simple client, <laughs> you know, instead of, instead of a accelerator program and the student side of it. But, um, 
Yeah, it's still, we haven't really made those changes officially yet or like rebranded any of it. But the accelerator is like our flagship service where like you basically become, you know, a VIP within the church run ec ecosystem where you get unlimited access to our team remotely. Uh, you get us to be able to come out on site at your church um, to, you know, do our surveys and do produce designs for your church. Um, we've got a couple other exciting things that we're, we've been testing, experimenting too. Um, as part of our church front premium offer, which is primarily like a, a, a membership to our site, you get the course access and this is better for the DIYers, but they want a little bit more help on maybe piecing together some, some smaller systems and solutions for their church. And we can church front can actually be the dealer for those products now. Um, so we, we're calling that church front express design. So it's like, Hey, you just want a box sale put together. You want to talk to a church front guy about how to piece that together properly. Um, just, be a part of Church Front Premium. You'll get access to Express Design Service from us, uh, and we'll we'll make it happen. So, that's yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. It's like we we might be rebranding and relabeling some stuff, but the website, you know, the three yellow boxes there. Like we have online training, consulting, uh, or, or coaching, and then integration services. Like that's that's what we do. Oh, and our conference too, but that's like a once a year thing. Nice, nice. How'd the conference go? Was it great this year? Yeah, dude, it was great. Wasn't as good because you weren't there, bro. But we'll maybe uh, maybe I'm get you on the docket for next year. I'm still a fan of like, what if you did a Florida and a Colorado conference? Is it too much? To I know do two conferences. Yeah. It may be a lot. Yeah, at this point it is. Uh, yeah. But we'll still. It is. It is fun. The conference is like it, it's now becoming a fun like party family reunion for for our team members for our vendors for clients like all of us to come together in one time a year but um yeah we'll see how it keeps evolving so yeah. it keeps it keeps getting bigger though that's awesome dude well you always inspire us uh it's been a journey watching you and like i mean for me personally just seeing how you have grown in like serving the church like that's what's most inspiring to me is seeing how like you just continuously your heart is to serve the church and yes you're able to support your family through that now but mm -hmm. i still see that heart and so like never lose that that's what we love about you man like you're just one of us you know in the trenches thanks, doing it and so yeah thanks for being on the live stream today dude we dude really i appreciate i it. am i am in the trenches probably more so now than ever <laughs> it's crazy it's like somehow church run keeps getting bigger but i feel like i find myself underneath crawl spaces and stages <laughs> more uh, or like this this i was i was setting up an led screen till midnight on uh wednesday night this evening so it's like not not because it took longer than it was but just weird weird delays were like I got a flat tire on the way to the job site and then Levi's he lost Southwest lost his, his luggage that set him back about four or five hours of having the right tools on site. So it's just like, you know, stuff still happens. It's great. I'm, yep. I'm staying grounded. That's, That's for sure. right. That's right. Okay, guys, we'll say thanks to Jake in the chat and uh, I'm going to let him go. And thanks. We'll thanks for having me, Ryland. You keep up what you're doing, bro. I love Appreciate it. Appreciate you. All right. We'll catch you next time. See you. Man, that was great having Jake on. Seriously, guys, say thank you in the chat. Uh, what a great time just to be able to catch up and hear his thoughts on some of the church tech world stuff that's going on out there and give you guys some feedback on your live streams. Uh, the beginning portion of our live stream, I don't know what happened. I hit go live, it either cut off immediately or something, but I was recording, so I'll update the channel with the full live stream uh, after we finish this next round. So I will be back in about, I don't know, two, three minutes, and we'll start this next batch of live stream reviews. So if you'll just give me, I don't know, a second to uh, catch my breath and take a drink, and then I'll get the other live stream reviews loaded up. I know we've got, let's see, uh, Adam and Josiah and Nigel uh, in there with the super chats so you're up next don't go anywhere it's going to be a great next round of live stream reviews on the friday live stream thanks for hopping on guys we'll see you in just a minute
All right, guys, welcome back to the next however long I have to get these next batch of live stream reviews going. Um, yes, we did have some issues there at the very beginning. So, Nathan, I did actually do a full live stream review with Jake earlier, and we recorded that. It just didn't hit YouTube for some reason. So, uh, I'll get that posted, and maybe I'll just have to send that to you privately. Um, either way, that's coming for you. We did get that done. Um, but yeah, I've got a few more. Uh, I got some time to do a few more at least and hopefully chat with you guys. No, we're not ending. Um, we got probably another hour to hop on and do some more live stream reviews. So there's been a lot of technology stuff happening in the world. We may have time to be able to chat about some of that stuff. If we're going to be implementing those things in our church, uh, man, I'm trying to capture content for you guys for the channel on our big move here at the church. There's construction happening all around me, even as we speak. I'm just here in my office, but just down the hallway, they're tearing down walls. There's, you know, bulldozers are out in front of our church, you know, demolishing things. So <laughs> it's a beautiful chaos here at Central, and I'm here for it. It's going to be great. So welcome back, guys. Let's jump into another set of live stream reviews. And we're going to start off with Adam Maxwell's church. And uh, let's see if I can go ahead and get you pulled up here. Maple View Church. Uh, Maple View. Rules to live by. Here we go. Uh, they're set up. Let me tell you about it as we get them going. Um, let's see. They have a Sony A6400 with a 28 to 70 for the wide shot that we're seeing right here. Then they have a Sony a7 III with a 55 to 210 for the sermon shot. And then a PTC optics camera, just kind of getting various tight shots. Um, that's all going into OBS through an ATEM Studio HD. Biggest struggle is just like image quality. Just looking for general tips for increasing that. And the audio is coming out of a Yamaha TF3 mixed with the Stage Mix app on an iPad. I do really like the Stage Mix app. Um, headphones uh, to, to mix that on. So you're getting what you get there. Let's uh, watch and listen here to Maple View, and then we'll give Adam some thoughts. All right, here we go. Volume coming up. You got those nice rolling V drums, though. Looks like a newer set, maybe. So far, I'm only seeing wide shot. Let's see if anywhere else in the worship. I mean, we did see that one tight shot. Here's a tight shot. Amen. No greater truth than the word of God. Using that PTZ optics maybe to get that tight shot over there on that singer. Um, and then popping over here to her. I saw that one earlier. Audio appear in sync to you guys. Hey, thank you, David. Appreciate you. Always check that audio sync. The, my favorite way to do that is your your tight shots like this, where you're going to see pastor speaking or people talking. I like to get that and record that as tied in, and I just get like some drumsticks and I click them together where I can see that hit and I record that and then I bring it into Premiere obviously with the audio in front of a microphone so I'm hearing that click you can do the balloon trick you don't need to do all that and then I'm looking at the waveform and just going frame by frame in Premiere or whatever editing software you have and then uh, waiting to see if that's lined up with that or not and then if it's not you can change your time code to milliseconds in Premiere uh, if you're just doing it in like an ATEM Mini Extreme that doesn't do milliseconds, you can just do frame by frame. And that way you can see how many frames you need to offset it by. Um, ours is like 130 milliseconds, but like it's going to be different based on what cameras you use. And then that can 
change if you're using a bunch of mixtures of cameras. So I like your LED lights you're lighting up the back wall with because it's just a plain white wall. You've kind of added some interest there. Um, the PTZ camera, it, it's the coloring of it. It's like very low contrast, maybe. Um, low saturation. I don't know. It's just it's very different than this one. Is maybe just the the black levels are raised on it, maybe, or maybe it's the white balance. I'm not sure, but. It's not bad, it's just not the same. Here's a tight shot of focus. I would check. Let's look and see. What is that? Is it eight? Yeah. Let's look at, okay, we are in HD. So yeah, check focus there. And I am hearing some glitching. I don't think that's on my end. So I don't know how you're encoding. I would try to add some more effects to the vocals and stuff, just to kind of give some more space. Uh, I don't think you have any room mics maybe. Sounds really direct. Sounds like you got a good team though. Good band, vocals are solid. Um, I, I wish I could see more of the room, possibly. You know, it's just pretty dark out in the room. Uh, even during preach and stuff. You've been robbing them and robbing yourself. Yeah, I don't know if any of that makes sense. If that's helpful or not. Of not valuing life, and one of the craziest trends in North America is simply this: When I was uh, in Burlington, Kansas, I was meeting with the uh, more, the funeral home there, and the mortician okay. that I worked with the most um, were from. There you go. Oh, you know I haven't been to this camera in a while. I'll show it some love. Uh, hopefully that that helps give you some things to work on don't try and tackle them all at once just pick one thing i think the first thing i would look at is just tweaking those cameras to match um and then possibly figuring out a way to add some light to audience so it's not just so dark and that that may just be on camera it's coming across that way um but again Thank you, Adam, for that super chat. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're the best. And now we are going to pull up <clears throat> Josiah Pittman's because he also had a super chat. Thank you. Appreciate you, Josiah. Uh, I'm going to use your most recent submission. I think you submitted maybe last month with uh, Chad Vegas. So I'm going to grab this one. They're rocking two Canon C200s, um, a C100 for drum cam, and a C300. So they're all in the Canon world. Looking for help with exposure, color matching. Audio is Dante from an SQ6 to Logic Pro. And then out of an AVIO to a television studio to embed the audio before it hits the resi encoder. So let me grab, oh, I've already got it actually pulled up. And uh, we'll just hop on over there. Oh, I don't have it pulled up. I lied. I was just, I, I misremembered. Groovy, lo-fi, let's go, baby. I like it. Here we go. I'll pray. So good. Hey, Cross. 
Crossbridge, it is so good to see you. I'm going to invite you to stand if you're able as we begin to worship together today. The snare doesn't sound like it has the snare drum or snares on. In the valley, I'll praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. I'll praise when surrounded. Cause my praise is the water. My enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing. I've got a There's reason to river. pray. For giving your drama at least a little bit of life. I'll praise when I don't. I'll praise because I know you still in control. I really like the use of the stereo field. It it's, feels more open for things to sit in the mix. My praise is a shout that brings Jericho down. Like that slider on the piano. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to pray. Yes, Lord, oh my soul. Sing it again, sing praise. Pray, yes, Lord, oh my soul. I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep inside? shot right there is just really dark i don't know what camera that one is but i mean your c100 even should be able to iso up and make this a much brighter image no matter how dark your room is i'd rather it be more grainy than that dark i am seeing some like aliasing on the edges of the the sails on that shot right there um it almost looks like it's um not shooting in progressive almost like it's uh like it's shooting interlaced maybe because whatever camera is on the keys i don't remember which one you said is on the keys let's look here c200s well, c100 is drum cam Wide shots are, oh, CRN 100s. Oh, they're PTZs. That explains it. Sorry. So you're doing iMag. How big is your room, Josiah? Uh, like, our new worship center is going to seat 650. Uh, we will have stadium seating, but we're still not going to do iMag. Uh, keys is CV503? Really? Interesting. It looks really good. I guess you have enough light on it. Yeah, these, uh, the PTZs are, I feel like, struggling with those edges. So there might be a setting in there that the sharpness is dialed up or something. Because your tights look really good. I do feel like everything's a little dark. It looks good. Uh... Audio sounds great. For me, the the drums, I just want the snare to sound more like a snare and less like a tom. Like the lower thirds there. That looks good. I like that they're standing in front of the sail with that backdrop. That helps them pop off the background. Good job. Let me tell you something, friends. God He's faithful through generations. I was trying to get him away from my mag, but I'm not convinced them yet. So why would he fail now? Yeah, I mean, 
in my opinion, unless it's just a viewing angle problem for like preaching, like it's a really wide room or something, and ours was a wide room, I don't think it's really that necessary, but whatever. You need it. It's a leadership question. You just do what they, uh, if they, if they need that. Support it. Um, let's listen just a little bit more here. I my life on Jesus And he's never let me down He's faithful in every season So why would he fail now? He won't I mean, I wonder, on your projection screens, does iMag come across dark on those? Or does it look exposed correctly on there. Um, yeah, it just seems like even faces could be bumped up a couple uh, stops. No, he won't. He won't. This is the only camera that I think is ex exposed correctly, and it's that Marshall. Because he won't fail. Christ is my firm foundation. Amen. The rock on which I stand with everything around me is shaking. I've never been, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, none of my cam ops ever adjust any exposure things. Uh, we just. You know, we have controlled lighting and we don't have to battle daylight or anything coming in. So we're, we're lighting appropriately for camera and for room and then finding that balance. And then all of our cameras are pretty much locked at ISO and shutter um, and even aperture. I could see, like, I know some places, like if you are doing back line and front line you might have some different lighting that you're battling right josh uh that you can adjust for but most of us are not having to do that um but she just looks a little dark so honestly though like it's a great live stream uh do you have any handheld stuff you might look at doing something like that next just to add some more energy to it and less of the just zooming in and out stuff but sounds really good in my opinion my house was built on Talented team. Don't rush. There you go. Fell back into it. Oh, he's getting her back onto it. There you go. Got it. All right. So that was uh, Josiah's Church, their Crossbridge community. Thank you for the super chat, man. I really appreciate it. All right, let's uh, go to the next one was Nigel. Thank you. Nigel says, I put two timestamps in my submission. Both were unrehearsed. We had to change songs last minute for the first, and the second was first lady singing before we closed out. Okay, I'll try to find that. Um, let me see over here, Nigel. Gotcha. I see, I see. Starting at 2620. <sighs> Guys, part of me is thinking whenever I just clicked go live on YouTube, it just didn't go live. Or maybe I clicked and it, I just didn't actually see it. I don't know. So what I get for... Not having like a pre-service actual countdown of like 10 minutes. That's the beauty of a 10 minute countdown, right? It's like you have plenty of time to make sure things are working. But on YouTube, I feel like for this thing, it's way too long. So I try to only do three minutes. And y'all were in the chat, like chatting with me. So that's why I thought it was working. <sighs> I need to just default to just check it on my phone. I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. All right, so uh, here we go. All right, 
right, so Nigel's set up. Two Lumix G7s, one on a motorized slider, one Lumix G85, an Atom Mini Pro, Mackie analog mixer with some outboard gear, um, some mics to capture drums. Having to do post-processing to get things around negative 14 LUFS due to gear limits at the moment. For example, the desktop can't handle more than a few plugins on OBS. That makes sense. The recorded mix that we broadcast later, we use OBS with plugins, such as TDR Nova for mix with bus dynamics. Okay. Let's listen. The G7s, G85s look great in here. You got plenty of light. So yeah, they're they're looking great. You got them matched up well. I like that slider shot in the back. I typically wouldn't focus the focus plane on the congregation. I would usually do it on the stage and have the congregation out of focus. But I mean, that's just whatever you're going for. I mean, it'd be cool if you could do a focus pool if you had somebody operating that, but somebody's pulling focus there it looks like surely you don't have that set on autofocus I'd say the vocals feel a little overpowering a little dry you got a lot of vocals so if you can maybe submix those down into like a man you're doing it on an analog mixer so you say your outboard compressors if those are can go all into one compressor and come into that and button those up a little bit listen I just want more space for your great band that I'm hearing is what I'm wanting come on Alright, I like the audience mics. It's just enough to where I'm hearing some of that. Oh, where's that horn? I mean, the vibe matched what I was seeing. Like, the camera work matched what I was... I don't know. It seems like it works. Let's go. Where's my sax? On? Come on, get a camera over there on that sax player. This is where you need like a, that handheld cam over on these instrumentalists. It's good framing here. If you love me, really love me, feed my sheep. He that said, piano sounds if good. You love me, really love me, then feed my No Tom mics, huh? And ever until the end of this world. Now go, go, go. If you love me, really love me, then 
Yeah, I mean, she sounds great. Band sounds great. Okay, he's playing over there. Okay, you got this man in the back for the tight shot. I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, uh, I think your coloring is great on the cams. I think maybe bailing to that one too, a little too often during worship. Um, I don't know. That's your only wide shot that I've seen that's dynamic. So I do really like it. I think it's looking great. I would say if you could add a roamer that's handheld. I've got a video on my channel of our setup. Just search like roaming cam. Uh, that would be great. So hopefully some of those thoughts help you out, man. I appreciate the support. All right. Uh, next up is uh, DJ That Production Guy with the super chat. Thank you. And uh, looks like he submitted for the Ark Church. So I'll go ahead and get you pulled up, man. And then on deck is Robert. So um, thanks for that super chat. Let's see. Y'all are going to pay for my family's Chick-fil-A today. Wow. Almost. <laughs> there we go. Looks like I got 30, well, probably 28 in here now that we've done a couple of y'all. All right. Here we go. They've got a Blackmagic Constellation ME1, two Sony video cameras, hardwired, and a Sony A6100 wireless. Audio is being mixed on a Behringer X32, uh, getting signal from a Behringer wing. Okay. Here we go. First thing I'm noticing is the volume seems low a little bit to me. Yeah, so you're at minus 10. I would say you could boost that, you know, another 5 dB for it to hit YouTube and your stream. Um, yeah, it just seemed comparatively a little bit low overall. And that's what it's telling me. Drums sound, the drums and bass are like. I like that. Show me the room. I don't like going back into it though. If you zoom out, cut away, and then zoom back in on a different time. Don't zoom out and then zoom back in. Make this a quick shot. Ah, you should be off of it now. I wouldn't hang on those that long. I like the shot, but not that long. Cut to this shot and then cut back off of it. Uh-huh. It's matching the energy of the song though. I really like that. Don't love the logo in the lower right the whole time. I don't know that you need that. Or maybe it's just a little large. Yeah, I like that I can... Oh, you're like strobing out in the audience. That's why I could see the movers are going out. Okay. And this band is getting it, though. 
there you go. That's a good tight shot. Okay. I like that drum shot. You know what I like is that I feel like as a viewer, like I'm there in the room with you. Um, it doesn't feel as like broadcasty. If that makes sense. Like iMac, I guess. I feel like it's... Eh, I don't love those shots as much. Feels a little too like in their face, but... This camera right here... You know, exposure is tough. It looks like dynamic range is not as good on it. <clears throat> okay. There you go. I think I like that. Get out of the way, cameraman. I want to hear what it sounds like on a down part. What are y'all seeing in the chat, y'all? All right, bass player. Come on, listen to that. Come on, listen to this. that shot coming up from behind the band there it's a little tight maybe there you go we're on an instrumental now so yeah show the, the players nobody's really singing anymore so that's that's a cool shot but yeah where's my bass player show them the bass player some love i got some guitar now he's just playing octaves get off him the acoustic player come on where's my bass player watch it just be in the tracks or something oh there he is I see him Kind of vamping. Yeah, so it's just like, 
exposure between cameras is what I'm kind of getting distracted by. Sometimes it's like really bright on their white shirts and then the next camera will be exposed correctly. Like this one, your, your handheld isn't handling it the same as this one. Uh, but I really love the way you're directing. I love the type of creativity you're bringing to the live stream. I think the audio is really close. Um, there was something about that snare where it was sitting. I don't know if it's the tuning of it or uh, I wanting it to be like a little lower, like uh, the tone of it maybe, the pitch. But a lot of times I know like gospel stuff is a higher pitch snare. So um, I don't know, man. I, I, I think I just want to encourage you. Like I think it's you're doing a great job. So yeah. Uh, and I think this is a good word for it. Captivating. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's hit our next one uh, here. Let's see. How y'all feeling? You hanging with me? What do we got? 44 of y'all still going. Let's do this. Uh, next up, we got Robert is the next super chat. So coming up to the plate, let me get you loaded up. Some great churches submitting today. Absolutely. Positively. Reality Church of Santa Barbara. Alrighty, they're streaming at 720 still. We need to fix that. <laughs> I'll get you pulled up over here. All right. Here we go, Reality Santa Barbara. Audio is way more important than video, though. Drums sound killer. I do love this song. I still wish there was a little more bottom snare sizzle on this snare, though. snare is just not coming through but then when you're able to let it breathe that's when we're really getting to hear it oh it is ah uh, she's got 
got a very recognizable voice. If that's what you were saying. Even with just one camera, uh, if you got audio dialed in, um, for worship, I would at least just have somebody just zooming into the person that's leading the song and just just following them around like they would the pastor, uh, maybe like, and or maybe just just add one camera, just add one more camera. Uh, you don't even have to have like a switcher to do that. You could just go into OBS and have a little. USB dongle to have two cameras have you're doing it and just switch it um, so you could have a tight shot and a wide shot and I think that would like like Jake was saying like you don't want to overcomplicate it if if you're not there yet but um, for me as a viewer I'm definitely more of a watcher at or, oh, sorry a listener at this point like this is a great to listen to and I think a lot of our people are just listening but um, we want to give them a reason to watch. Um, or you might as well just put on the podcast, I guess, later. Um, let's see. What, what do you do during sermon? Do you do you go to a tight shot during sermon? Oh, is that the ending song? Yeah, too much headroom there. Real, a little dark. Yeah, so like you could... Are you set up? You're not set up teardown though, right? So I would lower that headroom. It looks like there's some exposure things happening here. I don't know if you got on auto. space family of churches um, they are all independent brought you into this room your life is a gift yeah i would just say a little tighter on these tight shots if you can it may be too far away as to uh, you maybe have a have a crop mode on that camera where you could crop it in that if you're shooting life. in a different mode and uh, just bump up that exposure a little bit or add more light the to the stage for the preach exact imprint of his nature so uh at the end of the day, audio is king, right? I have a section in my live streaming course all about that. Uh, if you didn't know, I actually have a full-blown course called Next Level Live Streaming on a Budget. And we have lots of sections in here that help you with all kinds of things from audio to lighting to video. And... Uh, Lighting is queen, but audio is king. So if you're struggling with audio, I show you how we do our audio stuff. And uh, this course has 18 modules that show you how the Rylan Russell method, basically, for how we've done our live stream over the years and have achieved 236% growth on YouTube. And um, it's on sale for 125 bucks. So if you want to grab that, you can head to rylanrussell.com. There's probably a link in the description of this video. Um, and if you want some more one-on-one -on -one help, you can always go over to the consult tab and uh, you can book on my schedule there uh, on my tidy cow and just book a slot. I don't have a ton available because of the chaos that is happening around here. So there are some slots there available that you can do that there um let's see let's see it's 12 12 how's it going in the chat
Mm-hmm. Okay, friends. At this point, if you uh, put a super chat, it will not go to getting you into the live stream reviews because I'm done. It'll just be out of the kindness of your heart. And uh, yeah, we've been at this a while today. It's been a super fun time. Actually, we've been at this for two hours and 12 minutes. So <laughs> that's a long one. Um, again, sorry that the first 30 minutes of me streaming with Jake or 20 minutes was not on here. I'll try to, hopefully I hit record in time. You know, sometimes things don't go according to plan, but that's okay. All because you don't push the button correctly, maybe. I don't know. But um, at the end of the day, it, we're just here trying to have a little fun, make each other better. And I appreciate each one of you who are subscribed to the channel. As I said, I'm going to do my best to document things as we go through our remodel process here. And... Uh, take you along for the ride it's going to be quite the journey it already has been as this last week is our first week to move to three services in our venue that seats 168 people we've moved from a, a venue with 450 chairs to 168 and uh, it's been fun it really has it was it was totally different and cool so um now i can relate even more with some of you guys who have smaller spaces um and making things work in there so yeah, I better get things ready for this weekend. But, all right, I had trouble starting the stream. Let's see if Rylan can end the stream. Thank you guys for hopping on. I hope that you have a blessed weekend. Remember, at the end of the day, we do a lot of great things. Let's do it all for God's glory. We'll see you in the next one.